Chara Supply Chain. Highlighting and showcasing solutions for the most complex challenges facing the industry in 21st century by a team of subject matter experts and mentors. Broadcasting every week all year round, we will present the most up-to-date series of podcasts and webinars. Hello and welcome to another episode of Vichara Supply Chain. Uh, this is uh, Norhadi Yahas and I'm speaking now with uh, Koli Huang, a founder and uh, president of uh, DigiTimes. So um, thanks for coming and welcome to Vichara Supply Chain, Koli. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation. Mm-hmm. All right. So in today's episode, uh, we'll be talking about the disconnect uh, ICD supply chains, which is uh, one of the top issue in Asia. Uh, particularly in China. But before we go to discussion, can you please brief a bit about yourself and your professional background? I'm very happy to share with you about my experience before. I came back to Taiwan in 1985. That year was the taking off year of Taiwan high tech industry. Taiwan tried to develop PC based industry from that year on. And government recruited 20 young men to study how to help the country to formulate a strategy for Taiwan. I'm one of them. Next year, 1986, I was asked to go to Shinsu Science Park. People know that there's the most successful science park in the world. And uh, from that year on, we started from scratch. But maybe you didn't know, until end of last year, the total industry of Taiwan, even we only count, 800 listed company, they do stock trading and they focus on ICT supply chain. The revenue as big as 713 billion US dollars. That's a big deal. People knew that Taiwan contributed more than half of the semiconductor foundry services, more than 80% of the notebook PCs and almost 100% of the iPhone also produced by Taiwanese makers. And uh, this times my company we have 160 people work with me. And we are, looks like we are daily newspaper. We, we focus on ICT supply chain, as I mentioned. We publish about 90 to 100 articles every day. Wow. We also publish 300 reports yearly. And personally, government industry leaders hire me as an advisor. So we provide information and consulting services to them. And personally, I have some special experience before. Before I came back to Taiwan, I used to be the exchange students between Taiwan and Korea. So I speak Korean well. And I also assigned to America for two years to study how best buy good guys to sell the computers to the market. Lately, government and the industry asked me to go to China. So I traveled to China many times, more than 100 cities. And I used to be the advisor for Indian and Thailand government. I also traveled to many Asian cities. Like uh, last year, I was invited by Vietnam government and also to Filipino government and to India as well to present how we can work together and how you have to work with Taiwan especially and maybe in Korea as well. So this is my experience before. So I'm the analyst. Looks like I'm media guy. But actually, people say I'm an analyst, and I mm-hmm. published nine books before. So some of them are introverted. So that's my background. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, awesome. So, uh, what what is your view on the current supply chains in the uh, electronic industry, uh, Colin? Yes, our industry started from PC. I mean, new generation electronic industry, especially from 1985 because that was the first year of PC-based business. Because Microsoft launched Windows, then we have a common platform. Then IBM Intel co-built the industry. And Taiwan is a manufacturer to focus on like noble PC manufacturing. Maybe you didn't know, last quarter, I mean year 2020, year 2020, only last quarter, third quarter this year, Taiwan produced more than 50 million units of noble oh. PCs. Mm-hmm. That's a big deal. 
if every Nobel PC costs you five hundred US dollars, if every Nobel PC behind that the hundred different kinds of components, there is about supply chain. It's not easy. Just example, the best Taiwan keyboard. Keyboard is not a high tech. People say keyboard is not high tech, but maybe you didn't know. The best keyboard manufacturer of Taiwan, they produce seven million, eight million units of keyboards. Every one keyboard costs you three hundred, three US dollars only, but their gross margin still keep between twelve to eighteen percent. This is a big deal. So it's not easy to produce keyboard with this kind of price and also enjoy high growth rate and high 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 growth margin. So it's about supply chain. Keyboard is not high tech, but keyboard is about the supply chain.、Mm -hmm. And behind that, just if we're talking about auto industry in the future, I mean, future cars. Every car, maybe you need forty percent their value from electronic system. It's also you need to understand. There's one thing. So I I talk to you about PC. There is a top down business. If you take orders from HP, Dell, as Apple, Sony, then you you become the winner. Come come to mobile stage. We have to take orders from Apple, from Xiaomi, from Huawei, Samsung. Then you you become a big guys. But there is a so called top down business. Today we're talking about IoT. There's a button up business. We also think we also have, have to think about Indonesia, the country. Maybe、yeah. you have 260 million people work live there, and everyone need a mobile phone. But not only that, we need to provide you IoT solutions in the future, and they need to work with local companies. You have very good company like Grab, like Gojek. We have to work with you about how、yeah. to build an ecosystem. Not only hardware or only software, internet services. So in the future, future cars, we have two different perspectives. One is electric car, another one is connected car. There is a different、mm. thing. So it's about industry in the future. So over the past three decades, we always focus on European, American, or China needs. So we provide them with a volume, with a scale, with a mass production. But today we have to think about how to co-work with local companies to build a new system. There's a bottom-up approach. Yeah. So there's a reason why I I receive your invitation to talk about supply chain. There's very very、yeah. impo important change in the future. Yes.、Mm -hmm. That's why I, what I want to talk to you. And also we have to think about the. Devil divisions. What means for devil divisions? Just example. Today, semiconductor industry, the revenue as big as four hundred ten billion US dollars, thirty-two percent contributed by communications, thirty-eight percent contributed by computing devices. But it looks like they are bigger because seventy percent derived from those kind of two major items. But You need to think about the future opportunities,、mm -hmm. like consumer electronics, like industrial PCs, and also future cars, as I mentioned. So every item maybe contribute only ten percent, but the margin is higher than before.、Mm -hmm. And also localized. That what what I want to let you know. People need to think about connecting each other, and to build a new ecosystem for that kind of requirement from the industry. All right. Awesome. So an another question is:、um, since the COVID nineteen has has changed everything, right?、Uh, so, yes, yes. how does the company, how does the organization, has to adapt to this to this change? So, do you have any recommendation on the key strategic level? Maybe you didn't know. At the end of last year, based on the CP Insight data, they say we have. Four hundred thirty unicorns in the world, but forty-nine percent from America, twenty-four percent from China, which means three quarters count. Not belongs to us. They belongs to G two. There is a big mega trend. If you count the unicorns from India and the UK, they speak English mostly. 
Though the rest of the countries only share fifteen percent about unicorns resources, but believe me, in the future, consumer electronics, industrial pieces, or future cars, they need to link up with the emerging countries. Like a future car, electric car, not only happen in Europe, not only happen in American market, but also from the countries like Indonesia, India, or Vietnam. We can do it together, you know. To produce a traditional passenger cars, you need thirty thousand different items of components. For electric car, you know, less than nineteen thousand, which means thirty-seven percent decrease, and which means more easier for us to assemble a future car in the future. So I will encourage the country like Indonesia. To co-work with electronic companies to build the kind of system. So this is a new opportunity for us, and I believe there is a future. And Taiwan also has to think about not dispatch ten thousand people work in Indonesia. We need to localize co-work with local companies. There is a better way. So uh, talking more uh, specifically into China's industry and uh, supply chain evolutions. Uh, What what are your thoughts on this, uh, uh, colleague? Yeah, two years ago, I published a book about Asian age. Age have two different definitions. One is your political age. Yeah. Another one is is age of technology. Mm. Aging technology. There is not easy way to think about that. Mm. As I mentioned, based on worldwide semiconductor demand, the markets as big as four hundred. And the ten billion US dollars. You know, do you know how many percent from China? Fifty-eight percent from China. Wow. Mm. Consumed by by China, mm. but we have to identify two different categories. One is local companies and local demands, like Huawei, Xiaomi, and uh, the Noble. They create demand for local market and the global business. The rest of the twenty-two percent, mostly from Taiwan or A Korean-based company. Yeah, they do assembly in China. If we count together, fifty-eight percent, is the consumption consumed and uh, created by China manufacturing site. But based on the research and the survey of these times, we believe in the coming three years, Vietnam will contribute thirty percent to thirty-five percent of the noble PC. And another ten percent were from Thailand, but no Indonesia, and、mm. no India. Why? Because the countries like、uh, India and、uh, Vietnam, they they really care about, and、uh, they really try to understand what's the needs of Taiwan.、Yeah. You know, I just talked to founder and the pre- chairman of Foscon Group. You know, there's the biggest one EMS company in the world. Foscon, you know how many employees they have today? One point three million people. Wow,、mm. amazing, right? So Foscon is the biggest manufacturing group in the world. They are Taiwanese-based company. Yeah, I just talked to their chairman and the founder,、mm. and I say, is it possible for you to handle the same me- mechanism in other countries? No. Mm-hmm. He said, "We are very happy to work with local companies. So, just example: if you know how to produce mobile phone, it's not difficult for you to assemble future cars in the future, right. Right. because car is another mobile platform in the future.、Mm-hmm. So, we need to work together, and the Taiwanese makers also agree with that. I last week I talked to the chairman of Wishon, another、mm-hmm. maybe thirty-five billion US dollar company." Very big one. I talked to the chairman and vice chairman as well. We discuss the possibility in the future. So, I will suggest Indonesian government or research firms need to understand how to work with Taiwan, Korea, and Japan companies or China coming together to build your own system. And today, I believe lending is a very important approach. Just example, you know, Israel is a very good country to and a good performance 
about high tech. There were about 100 high tech companies listed in NASDAQ, America. Yeah. But yeah. do you know how, how many percent the unemployment rate? 21 percent. Because all of the technology cannot handle it. Yeah. So it looks like they are good. I'm not talking about they are not good. They are very good. They are very successful. But the most advanced technology, not good for lending and to influence the local society. This is very difficult. But we are so lucky, as I mentioned. We have 800 listed ICD companies. They do stock trade in Taiwan. And the Taiwan government asks every company need to release financial reports. So it's not difficult for you to understand what's going on and what kind of major items like a company like a Delta, like a Quanta, like Compel, what are they doing today? And who is the best supply chain player? Someone provides you logistics, like WPG, the largest one component distributor in Asia. They have almost 20 billion in such revenue. They have branch office in, in Indonesia, as I know. So think about that, co-work with them, and ask your government officials or research team to come to Taiwan to convince Taiwanese government to allow Shinto Science Park to work with Indonesia. I was a planner for Shinto Science Park in 1986. Actually, I'm the writer of Taiwan's first version computer industry development plan, 1986. So that was 34 years ago. I'm the witness for the whole industry. Maybe you didn't know. These times, my company actually co-invested by 40 industry leaders, includes Acer, MyTech, TSMC, UMC, Foscom, Asus, many companies, all of the chairman invest my company. So uh, this time it's a hub, that is true. You have to believe, we have copy newspaper, big one. We publish 90 to 100 articles every day. This is so-called supply chain, it's so complicated. Not just talk one item. Every day, we are daily newspaper. 90 to 100 articles every day. There is a mechanism we mm. provide to the industry. And the news, just, just like real-time news, real-time inf real information. But as I mentioned, we publish 300 reports yearly. Includes mobile phone, includes a car, includes a, a smart city. We conduct many sub surveys. So my company, there's a reason why we have 160 people work with me. So we need to co-work together. I'm also very happy to have the opportunity if after post uh, COVID-19, I'm very happy to go in Indonesia yes. to talk with local people, how we can co-build a information system to provide to the, to the, to the manufacturers, to the distributors, let them understand what's going on. So believe me, you, you have to believe. Every year, we ha I have more than 60, 70 times speech invitation to the industry wow. people, to the government awesome. ministers. So I'm acquainted with them. So I'm the hub. That is true, this time, not, not myself. Mm. We, are, we have a whole system to provide these kind of services to the industry. Exactly, exactly. All right, so this is my last question for today's podcast, Kali. Um, what is your prediction on the change of uh, supply chain in Asia's electronic industry over the next decade? I believe next, next, decade, uh, next decade, we have to think about uh, regional needs. Today, if I ask you, Indonesia, you produce your mobile phone, you produce your mobile PC, it's, it's very difficult because price pressure and the cost issues. It's not easy for you and it's experience. So I would suggest to jump into the next decade, ne ne next major items like future cars. And secondly, to help to, to understand how Taiwan, how Korea, how China developed industry from scratch. And the third, to formulate research by yourself. I can not help you. Oh, maybe I can help you because I can share experience for you with you. But you need to localize your thinking logic because your country is your own. I cannot help too much. I have my job. So you need to think about your needs. What's your really needs for? 
So I will suggest we have very good opportunity in the future because he counts. Mm. Mm. 260 people live in your country. So there's a big deal. If you can work together, you, you can build your own system. And believe me, post COVID-19, unemployment rate will be the key issues for every country. So please convince your government officials to come to Taiwan to convince Taiwanese to, to your country to investment. Because only we have mass production experience, experience successfully. As I mentioned, first Kong, 1.3 million people work with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, Compel, Wistrom, Event Tech, they are no less than 100,000. Mm -hmm. So they have experience to build the system for every country. Only Taiwan have this kind of experience now. So I will strongly recommend you come to Taiwan to learn from Taiwan. I, as I mentioned, I'm the writer of the first version of Taiwan Development Plan. I know how to start it from scratch. And I'm also very happy to share with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Um, it's, it was a really nice discussion, Kali, um, and very interesting to follow up on the next steps uh, for today's podcast. So anyway, thanks for taking time with us, Kali, and I look forward to speaking with you at another time. Take care and bye-bye. At Vichara Supply Chain, we are committed to driving global perspective to embrace technological adaptation in improving process efficiencies. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share Vichara Supply Chain. And stay tuned for the latest updates. To learn more, visit our website www.vicharasupplychain.com. Thank you for listening to us. We look forward to seeing you at our next episode.